This video is an update from the previous video that I posted about the 8 channel uh, voltage phase control Christmas light controller. Uh, the previous one that I had demoed, the previous version of the circuit, had limited serial communications capability, but it, it had built into the circuit an RS422 and 485 capability with the view that I could perhaps daisy chain several of these together or put them on some sort of a common shared bus and allow them to synchronize between each other uh, what various lights were being controlled at what level so for instance if it was multiple channels tied to music or something of that nature that never really turned into to be a, a real productive and since I'm not going to build any more than the single prototype I went and modified the circuit to now support RS-232 uh, given that that would make it more capable of being controlled by a standard PC on the previous version of the circuit right here, I had the Maxim chip that corresponds to 422 control. I've simply pulled that chip out. I've left the rest of the circuitry there, so if I need to add that chip back in at some point in the future, I could do that. And I put some additional circuitry here, the Maxim uh, Semiconductors Max 238 chip, which is a four-channel RS-232 control chip, and then the necessary capacitors to allow that to control and regulate the voltages required of the RS-232 specification. On the previous version of the circuit, one of these 150 microfarad capacitors was in the way. I've moved it up here to give myself the additional real estate, and I've put in a wire wrap header to allow just to push the capacitors into place, and then they're wired underneath uh, based on the requirements of that chip as a function of the data sheet. There are several versions of RS-232 control chips that are available. This one, the 238, I use because I happen to have it in the toolbox. I didn't need to go to DigiKey or anywhere and buy it. I happen to have it. And it requires a set of five external capacitors, all at one microfarad, in order for it to operate. I didn't have a lot of one microfarad, so what you see here are 0.5 microfarads wired in parallel, and then each parallel group wired to the Maxim chip in order to meet the requirements uh, for power conditioning and, and voltage control. Many of the maximum chi Maxim chips require a plus and minus voltages, plus minus 5, plus minus 10, or plus minus 12 in order to get the voltage swings that are necessary in RS-232. This particular chip is designed for a single plus 5 volt power supply and so it was able to be put on this board without additional consideration for voltage. I happen to have AC voltage, I happen to have plus 5 volts and plus 12 volts built into this board, but I don't happen to have any negative voltage, nor had I given any consideration for doing that. So in this case, this chip worked pretty well for this environment. I have this circuitry wired up to the RJ45 socket on here, uh, based on one of the specifications that was used for RS-232 over, over 8 wire interface for RJ45. So the pins 4, 5, and 6, I think, are what are used there and I'll show the schematic here in a minute that makes it more clear how that happens to be wired. But with this, I was then able to modify the assembly code that gets put on my PIC micro and allow the individual channels, the eight physical channels or 16 virtual channels given our polarity sensitive phase control, I was able to modify that so that I can control each of those levels from a hyper terminal window. And I'll provide a demo of that as we go forward. So here's the schematic for this particular portion of the circuit. I'm not sure how well this will show on the screen, but I've got my PIC 16C745 in the bottom right hand corner, and the two pins that correspond with the UART for serial communications, wired up to the MAX 238. I've only shown and drawn this as a one channel chip, simply to save space on the schematic. So there are three other channels that are shown, or that are not shown on this drawing that exist on that particular chip and that's all on the data sheet for the MAX 238. Uh, the capacitors that are there are shown as one microfarad, which is what's required by the design. Again, I physically implemented it with a bunch of 0.5 microfarads uh, that pin out the interconnection and the orientation of those capacitors. If you're using electrolytics, which are polarity sensitive, is just straight off the data sheet, so nothing special there. The physical wiring to the RJ45 is shown again based on that particular specification. 
So now that I've connected the board over the RS-232 interface back to a standard PC to a DB9 port, I've opened up HyperTerminal, which is what I'm using to do the communications between the two systems. Uh, I've got this particular HyperTerminal session set up for 57.6 kilobits per second, 8, none, and 1 with no flow control. So uh, 8 bits to correspond with every ASCII character, no parity bits, one stop bit, and no flow control required for this. So let me go ahead and turn it on. So we see that the Christmas light control system welcome message pops up and lets you know that the serial port has been enabled. It's one of the first things the assembly code does when when you turn it on. Uh, it, it goes through its standard demo loop where it's showing that each of the channels light up and then after that's done we'll get an indication that it's ready to be controlled by the serial interface. I haven't done this in the code yet but it would be sensible to have some sort of a interface where you could turn this on and off so you're not wasting clock cycles by outputting data for transmit buffer uh, and you're just allowing it to kind of go autonomous so right now this code is always output but if I was going to do another rev I would do that so now it's all done with the demo display on the lights we get the press any key to control let me hit it and when it does that all of the lights are silenced and go to the lowest power level going to zero and it lets us know that we're right we're ready to control each of the channels independently if we desire so it gives us the prompt to pop up and ask us for what channel we want to control zero through f in this case that's a hex number with 16 total possible values, 0 through 15, if you will, so 16 inclusive. Uh, that's simply the easiest one character way to pick a particular channel since this is really a 16 channel system. If you remember from the previous videos, even though there are only eight physical AC ports, a given string of lights, if it's LED, I can control one half of the light string differently from the others by controlling the top and bottom portion of the AC waveform separately. So uh, we pick a given channel. In this case I'll pick channel 4. So let's go ahead and control another channel. Let's pick channel 5 and it's off again so we're going to go ahead and turn it all the way on. Now it's turn that channel on. If, if you remember we have 16 total channels to work with corresponding with the two virtual halves of eight physical channels. So the physical AC power plug that corresponds to number five there also can, can be controlled in part by channel D. Uh, just the fact the way that I did the numbering to loop that back around. So one half of those string of lights on five is also D. So I'm going to turn those on. Oops, I've hit C. Let me just put in a number there. D, we'll go FF. So now both halves of the string of lights that's physical channel for part five there are, are on. Um, we can adjust those separately and I'll demo that by just changing the light level on five down to something uh, more in the middle. So I don't know, let's say 7D. And so now part of that string of lights is significantly lower than the others. I'll, I'll demo that here in a minute in greater detail to show the fidelity between the two different uh, virtual control channels on a physical AC plug. I built a little bit of air checking into this so I could either take a capital or lower kettle, uh, lowercase a through f. Um, if you push in something that you know wasn't intended like a j it'll give you the fact that it's not a valid hex and give you the opportunity to to enter another number. So um, at any time you can hit escape and it basically just goes back into the demo loop so once I've done that this, the uh, lights now are going back through and just continuing to blink and change their own level as part of a demo and if I wanted to get back into it I just have to press any key and I'm back in the position to control them so um, that's about it for the hyper terminal session I'll now show the lights in action corresponding to what we've done here on the screen so uh, 
Right now, the Christmas light controller is just continually varying the light level of each of the 16 virtual channels. As you can see, looking at any given physical string, we are controlling for those that are LED and not incandescent, we're controlling two halves of the light string separately. So here's a good example. This corresponds with the channel 5 that we'll be controlling, and you can see the light levels are changing separately between the two strings, but it's just one string of lights, you know, two, two wires for AC. And again, uh, refer back to the original video on how that's accomplished through AC phase control with polarity sensitivity. So uh, we'll go ahead and we've got the hyperterminal session running and it's we're at the press any key phase and as soon as I do that it goes and commands all the lights down to zero giving us the fidelity to control each. I'll select channel 4 and we'll turn it to the highest level so from 0, zero to F, F and you can see that on that particular physical interface for number four that one half of the light string is turned on so that's physical channel four and we go to virtual channel four we go to five we'll do the same we'll turn five all the way up and if you recall the corresponding other virtual string on five was D so we'll go ahead and change D all the way up so now both parts of that light string are all the way on and we can go ahead and just change the levels here um, we'll take channel 5 and we'll turn it down to 3D just kind of a random number uh, that's obviously a low light level and whether you see in the video or not it is on but it's significantly lower that's a little dim we'll turn them up a little bit we'll go from 3D we'll select let's say 7F which increases the brightness there's a slight difference in them uh, they're almost still all the way fully on so we'll find something maybe a little bit in the middle so you can see there 5D that drops them a little bit looks to be about a good 50 percent. The fidelity to control the voltage doesn't necessarily directly correspond with the photon level output and that's just a function of the way the LEDs are manufactured for us. So for a given string you almost have to have a, a conversion factor to know whether you're to how to what fidelity you're, you're changing them. So uh, all can be changed and modified so that's just a quick demo to show the lights controlled separately. Anything from from the fullest to the lowest level. We'll go ahead and turn D down real low, say 1D. And you, know, you can just barely see them being on. So I'll turn up to 3D for that light level. So 256 possible combinations for each individual channel updated at eight, every 8 milliseconds. So if we were to continually stream data at this and if we weren't dependent on the hyper terminal but we had a, a Python program or something streaming out we'd be able to change this lighting level across the entire system at 8 milliseconds with 256 individual settings per channel. So that was kind of the original goal was to get that high fidelity lighting control uh, that would work on both incandescent and LEDs. And if you had an incandescent, you'd, you wouldn't get these two virtual channels, it'd be one big channel, and you would want to pair channel 5 and channel D together so they're the same value so you have a better track of, of what you're actually controlling, what the total output light level is.